Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowances made for the fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair. All topics are for entertainment purposes only. None of the information presented in this video or by B-Girl TV should be taken as fact. Every situation is based on personal experience. Image Boutique is located in the Centro Comercial de los Pueblos Mall, located in Panama City, just 15 minutes away from Tacuman Airport. We specialize in hair care, wig extensions, and much more. Come visit us. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to V Girl TV. First of all, I want to make sure that you guys can hear me. Let me know if you guys can hear me down in the comment section before we start. Let me know if you can hear me down in the comment section before we start. I have a whole new setup, guys. So I want to make sure that you guys can hear me. I see people are still coming in. So welcome everyone. Welcome to the live. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Camille. I know you've been waiting so long for this live. Um, you know, people always come in late. So I just want to say welcome. Thank you everyone for tuning in to V Girl TV. Um, you guys are amazing. And just want to run through this real quick while people go in. Do not forget that we are doing our toy drive for the children of Colon City. If you are in Panama and you are tuning in, you guys can buy a gift from the ages of zero months to 14 years old um, and drop it off at the store. If you are in the States, we don't recommend that you send anything because they're going to charge us to take the items out, unfortunately. So I did set up a GoFundMe link so you guys can click on the link if you want to make a donation um, for the children of Cologne. Anyway, guys, let's just jump into this live. Um, I am super excited to actually have this, to actually um, do this interview today. For those of you who have not had a chance to see who, the, who we're interviewing or who we're going to have a chance to talk to, we are having a conversation with Gloria Caramanitis. She is the first black woman to win um, Miss Panama to represent Miss Panama in in Miss. I want to introduce her to the live stream, and you guys, please, please, um, accept her and give her a warm applause. Welcome. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. I am Gloria Caramanites. Yes, let <laughs> us, let's see. We have to give her, everybody that comes gets a round of applause here. <laughs> okay. So we're going to actually jump into the live, how we usually do our live discussions. I ask you questions and then the, the viewers also have, look, everyone's clapping already and telling you welcome in the comments. I don't know if you can see them. And they also can ask you questions. So um, let's start with you introducing yourself. Who are you? Uh, and then we'll jump into the live. Uh, well, basically, I am Gloria Caramarnites. I am from Colón, Panama. Um, most of the people know me as the first Black Miss Panama to represent Panama in the Miss Universe pageant in 1980. I was the seventh runner-up for, for the Miss Universe in that year that was held in Seoul, Korea. Somebody said in the comment section, bienvenida, que honor tenerla en vivo, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Somebody else said, Stephen Ford said, welcome, la reina. 
<laughs> Stephen Ford said, Benvenidos. Amazing. Aski said, Yes, the queen is here. <laughs> So I want to go start off by asking you about your childhood. What was it like growing up in Cologne um, when you were much younger before you decided to enter into Miss Universe, well, into Miss Panama pageant? Well, um, everyone from Cologne knows that growing in Cologne is a prodigious childhood. And that's how I, I see it myself. I, I will never change the, the fact that Cologne don't look the same. I would have still born in Cologne. And I am very happy to be from Cologne. I went to the School of the Blinds for a pre-K. Uh, then I went to Juan Antonio Enriquez, Jose Guardia Vega for two years, and Colegio Abel Bravo, where I graduated from high school. Um, I did everything that you could imagine, play jacks. Uh, I play, in, now they call it rajuela, but we used to call it scots. Uh, anything, ladron y policia. My favorite game was, um, in Colombia it used to rain a lot and, and we, have, we didn't have no computers. So we have to recreate ourselves. And I had the cockroaches, uh, uh, a run okay <laughs> and i know it's funny but there were back then there were um albine cockroaches and flying cockroaches so those big one cockroaches we used to uh, you know kill them and then go through what we call sanjas and and with the rain they will go down so we pretend they were running one against the other oh and that's how we have fun under the rain in, in Cologne back then. <laughs> so where, yep, were your parents from Panama as well? Or were they from, or were they immigrants or did they migrate from Panama? Well, um, I had a, a, a great mix. Um, my grandfather, Mr. Davis, that's what the <laughs> accent, Mr. Davis, he was from Kingston, Jamaica. And wow. his grandparents are were from what we call today Liberia, Africa. Mm -hmm. My grandmother is from a, a, what we call now the Nove Gouble, a indigenous in the area mm -hmm. of Bocas del Toro. So my mother was born in Bocas del Toro and then we, they all emigrated to Cologne. And then my last name, it happened to be a Greek last name from my father's side. That's interesting. Very, mm -hmm. very interesting. So now that you, in, you, you grew up, you grew up in Cologne, you enjoyed your life. What made you decide to run or do pageants? Was Miss Panama the first pageant or were you, did you do other pageants before that? I went all over the place. I have, I went, I am, uh, correction, I am still the queen of the verbena del coco. I haven't crowned nobody yet. <laughs> and, so I was the verbena del coco queen in Abel Bravo. I was um, Panameñísima Reina Negra. There was a pageant called Miss Universe Black mm -hmm. that this current Miss Universe um, sued and they canceled the pageant. So I went to the, I, I want for the, to represent Panama in the Black Miss Universe. So mm -hmm. that was canceled. And then I went to the uh, Miss Universe. Okay. Now, is there a process? Was there a process before you got to Miss Universe? Or did you have to do something else before that? Or you just... Yeah, but actually, yes. Um, uh, when you register, I actually, I, I wasn't planning to be no Miss Panama. I really... I uh, joined the Miss Panama pageant because um, I was in an organization, a left-wing organization called Guaycucho Nir, that we were fighting for social justice for Cologne. Um, you know, the same thing they're fighting after 40 years, um, better job, and what the, the government neglecting Cologne, et cetera, et cetera. We, we're fighting for the same thing people are fighting today. Mm -hmm. So um, my mom used to work for the 
for the government. And I was um, creating riots every week until they changed it. You know, they, back then, the reason we had the biggest riot was um, because the president of Panama, he was from Colón, Basilio Lacas, and his, his solution for the social problem in Colón was to create more uh, prostitution houses. Mm -hmm. So all the students of Abel Bravo, we came together and we decided that was that was impossible. So we, we did a couple of riots. We, we ben, uh, burned the Gobernación and the Alcaldía. And um, we got suspended from high school and my mom got threat that she's gonna be, they will fire her from her job. So I wanted to make peace with my mom. And she, I noticed that she liked the beauty pageant stuff. And so I just, you know, joined the Miss Panama. Uh, there were 32 girls uh, inscribed and all of, all of those 32, then 15 of us were selected. Were you the only black woman that was selected? Yes. Actually, I was the only black woman uh, that signed. Yeah. Oh, okay. So why do you why do you think that more black women did not sign up? Do you think that it was because they felt that they wouldn't have a chance to win or that they just weren't in into into that kind of stuff? No, no, definitely it wasn't a chance to win. Um uh, the the day that someone spoke to me about the Miss Journey World was in a bus in a Panama Columbus, and this lady told me, oh, you could compete, you will win. I said, I never heard of a black woman when winning the Miss Universe, or, or Miss Panama, sorry. So um, she said, no, this year is different. I'm, I'm gonna be working with the owner of the pageant, etc." cetera. And she go, I said, okay. And I, they went to my job. I used to work for, for for the equivalent of the IRS, which is back then it called Hacienda y Tesoros. Mm -hmm. um, and she went to my job and I inscribed and that was it. She told me when I have to come to the meetings and stuff and that's what I did. And I got selected out of, out of the 32 girls. Um, but yes, it was not, It's there's nobody thought about winning the Miss Panama. In fact, there was a black the, the uh, Panamissima Reina Negra was uh, created precisely because there were no black uh, representation in my times mm -hmm. in any of the other uh, pageants. It's so funny that you said that you were like an activist back in your time because mm -hmm. I happened to meet your daughter when I first, first moved to Panama and yeah. she is definitely Lamar. Lamar. Yes. Yes. And she is very, she's definitely an activist when it mm -hmm. comes to, um, afro descendant people yes. she's definitely a fighter and i had no idea that that was your daughter until Ooh. recently i found out that that was your daughter. <laughs> yes um so now you win miss pa so now you win miss panama right mm -hmm. so there are certain um urban legends i would say urban legends because we don't know if it's true or not that mm -hmm. when you um were running for miss panama that they tried to stop you from actually winning by asking you questions that weren't necessarily part of the questionnaire or something of that sort. Oh yes, definitely. That that's 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 a fact. Okay, it uh -huh. is a fact. Is that um, <clears throat> they never heard about a black woman winning the contest? And although, uh, let me say this first. Um, when I am I'm, I'm a spiritual woman and you don't realize how everything gets into place when things are supposed to happen. Right. For instance, um, all the judges were Panamanian, well, some of them were Panamanian living in, a, in the foreign country and the perception of life were different from the regular a judges from other years. Um, there were two or three that were foreigners. And one of the judges was um, a, a makeup artist from Brazil. And that makeup artist, um, that year they introduced uh, the fact that you were mingling with the judges, but you didn't know who was the judges. 
Mm. So I was, I didn't win, I didn't really sign up to win. I was signed up because I wanted to make peace with my mom. You know, she was treading me like, I'm going to kick you out of the house. And I was like, when should I go if you kick me out of the house? <laughs> it's not like now, like when you're 18, I say, mom, I'm gone. No, back then you were, you live in your mom's house until you got married. However, the situation here was um, that the judges were a Panamanian living in the foreign country. They were foreigners. And this, um, the, the, the makeup artists from Brazil play a very important role, as well as the accountant, uh, uh, Flesher Montenegro de Flesher. She was the accountant. So they, they, say, they say, you know what? Um, we always sending the other girls, the famous, the daughter of so and so, and we're gonna do a chance because we need to make something different. Mm -hmm. So she was determined to make it different. The owner of the, the contest, which is Carolina Chiari, she said over my dead body. Wow. She didn't want me to win. I mean, she wanted me to be in the pageant because it would show equality. But in reality, I shouldn't win the contest in her eye. So in that year, the um, the, the hosts were Justo Fidel Palacios. And Justo Fidel Palacios said that when they have the final numbers, they should give it to him in his hands. So that's how I become Miss Panama, because it, it, it generally goes from the accountant that give faith that all the numbers are correct to the owner of the contest. But because she had that hesitation that she heard that I was winning, she had that hesita hesitation, she said, over my dead body. So he said, well, you give it directly to me because we have to announce the real winner, not the winner that she wants. We have to do a job and we were hired to do a job and the job will be done however i i was winning by 18 points i, I mean i found out this later and the owner uh, the owner of the newspaper called la estrella de panama 40 years ago are the the, the were the fam, uh, duque family and if you know the history of the duque's family they are black okay and they didn't they don't call themselves black but they are black and i i think that on in their conscious they realize they're black and the, the struggles of of the black so they asked me backstage a question that have nothing to do with the beauty pageant we answered all the the, the question in front on the scenario but the backstage it was a questionnaire that the question was what is the consanguinity law that prohibit that the widow would marry to his uh, widow would marry to the sister? So there was a couple of girls that were studying law, and they uh, they said they call the code this and blah blah. Everybody gave an answer. So when it was my turn, I asked him to repeat the question, and I repeat the question in my brain, and I say, "Well, the widow cannot marry her sister." So there's no law. He said, yes, yeah, you the winner for me. You the winner. Wow. Called Mary Arias, that we all know. Um, um, she said no. She was the only of, of the 12 judges that did not give me the okay. But it, it didn't need it because it was 18 points. And that second question backstage was to prove that I was the winner and I would make a representation. But the question really, in, in fact, doesn't mean that I will give Panama a good representation. It just means that they were convincing the, the ones that weren't convinced that, yes, I was representing Panama. So amazing, Oski. He, he jumped into the question. I was going to ask this question anyway. <laughs> he said, how did Ms. Chari feel after you won and then placed Miss Universe? Well, after uh, she had to live with that. 
no? And she asked me to relax my hair and I could relax my hair and, um, and you know, I have to say certain things and, you know, she gave me a little speech. I take this speech, but I already was a public speaker. So, you know, it, it didn't matter. I just played, like we said, we play a ball, I play a ball too. So that was not the only thing. The most amazing thing is was that there were a couple of ladies of Club Union that they got together, together they raised $10,000 for me not to represent the country. Wow. Unfortunately for them, because I was going to take the money, but I would still go. <laughs> but right. unfortunately, um, there was um, an activity in Colombia that I was invited as a Miss Panama. So I went to that activity like two days before they got the money together. Okay. So I went from, from, from Panama to Colombia, from Colombia to Los Angeles, to Los Angeles to, to Korea. So they didn't have a chance to give me the money, but the offer was there. What so they offered you this money just because they because you were black and they didn't want you to represent Panama? Exactly. I find it very weird because and, and I always say this because people like when my friends come to visit Panama, when you live in New York, majority of the people that live in New York City are either they're mostly black Panamanians. That's what you see. Exactly. So people always think that most of Panama is predominantly black. But then when they go to places like Panama City, Los Santos, Choret, I am not Chorera, and the other places. Herrera. They, yes, they, they realize that Panama is not majority black, that mm -hmm. even in Panama, we are the minorities, but still we represent a huge culture in Panama. And that stereotype still hasn't changed much to this day. I mean, it's gotten a little better, but there's yes. still things there are still things in Panama that definitely needs to change when it comes when it comes to things like that. But how did that make you feel once you found out afterwards the things that people were doing to try to stop you from moving ahead to represent a country that you were born in and you have the right to represent your country because you too are Panama just like everybody else. You know, so I I mean actually I was looking forward to get the 10,000, okay? I I was from 3rd Street, Colón, Edificio La Alborada, apartment 305. I never saw $1,000 together, okay? Mm -hmm. Back then, was it 10,000? I was, like, was going to be a millionaire back then mm -hmm. with a $10,000, okay? So my salary was $400 a month. When am I going to see $10,000 together? You know, so mm -hmm. I was looking forward to get the ten thousand dollars. My my dress for 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 the Miss Universe, it, it was made by by um, Daniel Watts. It's a it's a designer from Cologne. We bought the materials in Bolivar. You know, and my saying we use some stuff from Bonanza and Cebede. I think it's Capri where you. I don't remember the other story where we used to buy the the, the material. So I was looking forward for the $10,000, but when I got to Colombia, I realized how a queen is treated. Mm -hmm. In Colombia, the queen was the queen, and everywhere the queen goes, everything is for free. So when I went to Colombia, I went with two luggage. I came out of Colombia with seven luggage. I got diamond rings, esmeralda rings, dresses, shoes, anything you want. You want it? Take it. You're the queen. They treat you as such. Okay, so that was very, give me an, an experience. Colombia gave me the experience that I didn't have in Panama. Because Gloria Caramanites broke the ice. And when you break the ice in, in certain situations, you pay a price mm -hmm. and my price was I, I was not accepted by everyone in fact um 
up to this day, 40 years later, I have not gotten all my prizes. I, 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 there was some other prizes that I needed to get and I never got it. So it was a lot of taboo when you become the first one. Um, I keep moving, I, I kept doing things. Um, and when I came back, they were highly surprised that I made it to the finalists. And I thought that um, if, if I had that support from the government and from the Miss Panama institution, I would be at least like the second or the third runner up. Because I mean, I didn't have no luxury dress. I didn't have no luxury shoes. I did the best of my capacity, but having a support would have made a lot of difference. Do you think, because you know, people always have some something negative to say about people from Cologne, even up till to this, up to this day, sometimes I go on like certain websites and I read some of the comments that people say, these are people that live in Panama and they talk very, very negatively about Cologne. Do you think that also played a part the, that they treated you that way because you were black and you were from Cologne? Or do you think it was just solely, if you were from the city, do you think it would have been any different? Uh, it, it would have not made it a difference because uh, when I went to the previous contest was is the Miss Black Panama. I mean, we were trying, we were treated like black women and, and the perception were like oh yeah some beautiful black woman and all of that but you're black you know it was a but, but mm -hmm. okay you weren't a regular citizen okay there was always a but um i i think that um let's see for instance um tanisha tanisha it was the second black miss panama mm -hmm. And she also is from Cologne. And her story is, is very interesting too, because the judges didn't want to choose Tanisha because of her skin color. But a foreigner judge say to the rest, the black woman that you have there is the only one that is the correct representation of Panamanians. Meaning to say that a foreigner have a better perception of what was a Panamanian than the Panamanians. No, so she have a great story. I mean, I, she could say it better than me. And, and, and actually, I think her story is very beautiful because um, she wanted to be Miss Panama. Mm -hmm. And I know her since she was a little girl. And having Gloria Caramantes becoming a Miss Panama gave her hope to become mm -hmm. a Miss Panama. Mm -hmm. No? So now we had a, a dip, you know, we had um, Sorangel Matos. She's from Darien. I, I can't remember the, the other one, but there has been four black Miss Panama, two from Conon and two from El Darien. Things are changed a lot. But um, to say this, um, one thing is that to feel yourself black, and another thing is, is to feel black. I mean, to see, to, to appear to be black and to feel black. No, because um, there's some black light skin that they will tell you, no, I'm not black. Mm -hmm. There will darker skin that will tell you, no, I am not black, I'm mm -hmm. not here. No, then, the Latino situation versus the skin become an issue in many cultures, but Panama still have a, a, a majority of, of black that are mixed with the mulatos. And then because they become mulatto, they change their own perception of I'm not black, you know, because now there's so many names is when you are homosexual, you have so many different names mm -hmm. I, I can't pronounce all of them because now i get confused i mean mm -hmm. before it was two things you know gay and lesbian but now it's more than gay and lesbian so now in in the in, in the context of race it's more variation of i'm just black and white it's right. you're black you're mulatto you're mestizo you 
we have some of our ramification and the ramification what makes complicated even for us because we don't perceive ourselves as black and that is the biggest problem. I am a proud colonensa, no? I was not born in Colón. I came to Colón when I, when I was five. But if you ask me, I, I come from Colón and I love every single street, callejón, esquina of Colón. I love the people and I am working in a foundation now to enhance the quality, not only the quality of life, but the quality of thinking mm -hmm. of the Colon people, because we are great people. I'll give you an example, and that is, is, is like a, a chiste, but it's a reality. Mm -hmm. No, uh, my friend Aldo Brunet was telling, we were from Third Street, entre, between Bolivar and Herrera, right? And they have, you know, gangs. And the building that I brought, they call them, that, that I left, they call them uh, Los Peñoneros, right? So, you know, everything happened in there. Drugs, everything. So um, the guy said, you know, we could improve our life, etc. You know, good people come out of even the third, third street. And he said, well, he mentioned my name. You know, Gloria Caramante used to live in that building in 305. And he said, she must be a rakataka. What? <laughs> and I laughed. He, he didn't meet me yet, but I would like to meet him. It's not that he knows me. And he not, it's the perception that we have about our own people. Yes. It's the perception was... And nothing good can come from Cologne. If your mentality stays there, everything that you see, you want to think that it's not value because it's come from Cologne. But Cologne have great people with great passion. And, and, and I think we are a little different from the rest of the country because our peculiarity, we, we are happy people. We like, you know, party. We like to dress up. And but there's now there's a subculture you know, we don't we don't talk similar to the rest of the country. I mean, I could talk like that too, you know, but I could differentiate. But going back to the foundation, is the foundation is precisely to get the youth to change the spectrum of mentality. You know, like yes, I can't, yes, I am proud of who I am. And because of those parameters, I could grow and grow differently, no? And my expectation is to take this youth to study abroad because the study abroad will give them mm -hmm. a better experience in life and understanding yep. that where we come from is exactly what we can do is to better our city because we, we had a great city. Um, I'm going to go to some of the questions in the comments. Um, I am said, how did the other Panamanian contest contestants feel when you were crowned Miss Panama? Well, it's, it's, you could read between their eyes and you could see that some of them were not happy and some of them, yes, were. I, I think my year was very challenging in the fact that um, my first runner-up was the niece of the president of the country. She was um, Aurea Horta. She uh, was the, the niece of Omar Torrijos Herrera. So in those days we were military government and the military government had a lot of saying and a lot of decisions. So I think it was a great challenge just to have her as my first runner-up. Okay, because it was a difficult decision to say it's either she or the black lady. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Cornelio said, wow, I was living in Cologne in those days. Amazing Oski says, this is so disheartening to hear. And he also says, Cologne loves you too, Gloria. And he, <laughs> sends, he sends hugs and kisses. Thank now, you. once you made it to Miss Universe now, now this is a whole nother ball game. This is oh. not 
small little Panama with this with a small um, population of people now. Now you are up against all these different countries, women from all different um, walks of life, different countries, different cultures. How did how were you able to adapt to those those people at the time, the, the women? Well, I didn't have no big deal because listen, I for me I was a gladiator and I had the capacity to 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 you know be in an atmosphere and, and mingle with anybody. I mean I didn't have no complex at all. So but I did my best. Um Daniel watched them all a lot of dresses for me and he was very creative and I worked with those dresses like I had a fit five in your dress, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and then um people from other countries don't see you the same way, you know, like you know, like Jenny from the black. No, no, they didn't see me like yeah, they see me like a Miss Panama. It was another different ball game. The Miss Universe pageant, uh, they give you awards, they give you nice dresses, and they give you things that you feel like a real queen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, it was a, it was, it was a great experience because I, I didn't dream of having all of those things that I got, right. you know. And 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 my mom, you know, she goes the best thing we, we the best she could do, you know. I didn't have no luxury. So that was extreme luxury for me. And how did your mother feel when you won? Oh my God, I find out that I won because of her. Cause she jumped on me and she said, oh, we won. I said, we won? Ah, oh. you know, because I, it was Auri Aorta and me, and I, when they say, and the, the winner is, I heard my name, but I thought she win. Because uh -huh. in my mind, I was like, no, I didn't win. Uh -huh. How can I win the niece of, of the the man of Panama, the president of Panama, the general of Panama. No, I didn't. You know, I didn't want that. I was saying that in my brain. But she jumped at me and she said, "We won." I said, "We won." And then everybody, you know, I um, I am very you know grateful that this happened because it changed my life. I actually, if I didn't, I was in Miss Panama. I probably would have been maybe the governor or a deputy, a legislator of Panama mm -hmm. at this point. But in, in fact, I, I think the foundation going to help me accomplish the things that I haven't accomplished as a Cologne woman. I, I, I want to work in my community, and, and that's, that's my main goal. You know, I've always been, and I, and I don't want to die without changing the life of, of many youths in, in Cologne. Yeah, we're definitely going to talk about the foundation. I definitely want to get into the into the foundation, but people are still asking mm -hmm. questions here because when I told them that I was going to interview you, everybody was like, oh, no, we have to tune into that. I want to hear this. <laughs> like People were really waiting for this interview. So we're definitely going to get into, into the foundation um, but I did want to ask you this. So now your daughter, okay, Lamar. She, yes, Lamar. Uh -huh. She did a documentary about you that went to the Tribeca um, Film Festival, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. When she came to you and said, Mom, I want to do this documentary on you and I want to take it to the Tribeca Film F Festival, mm -hmm. what did you think? Like, what were you, how, what was going through your mind at that time? If, if you know Lamar, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I cannot tell Lamar no. Uh -huh. Your documentary. I was like, okay. I didn't tell a, a big deal. And then she's, why did she say, Ma, you have to sign this paper? I said, Lamar, sign paper? What this paper means? Because, no, she was persistent, but I wasn't paying really attention to it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Everybody had the part in the interview, and then she came. I mean, we we did part of the of the documentary in Panama when I mm -hmm. went in August for a vacation, and then I think it was a winter time that she came there with with the camera and stuff, and I was just following through. She said, "Ma, and what happened when this?" And that? I really didn't take it serious. I took it serious when they told me that it was going to the track. Actually, it was filmed. I think a year and a half before the pandemics. So the mm -hmm. pandemics 
shut down everything and I forgot about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I said, and then I told my dad, Lummy, we would call her Lummy. Oh, what is about all of these things? Because I signed paper. I don't know what I'm signing. Am I getting a paycheck? And she said, no. <laughs> so I said, who's getting the paycheck? She said, me. I said, okay. All right. But my mom, my daughter would not let me say no. Okay. First of all. Uh-huh. But actually, when I read about the Tribeca Film Festival, because I don't watch TV, I was like, I'm going to the Tribeca Film Festival. I was really honored. And more importantly of that honor is that um, my daughter immortalized me. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I, I say I'm going, I, I finally going to be a grandma in, in December. Congratulations. Her, thank you. And, and, and I said, okay, oh, so now my grandma, my grandchild will be able to see her grandmother. When I met her, she was doing some stuff in Panama, and she's like, "Hey, I want to take Afro you to Park." The yeah. Afro- yeah, but she wanted me to go to the radio station to talk about black hair, and I was like, "I'm not going to the radio station. They're gonna laugh at me. My Spanish is not perfect." She said, "Girl, it doesn't matter. I'm taking you to the to the radio station, and you're gonna talk, and that's gonna be the end of that." And I said, "No, but I don't want to go because I don't want to." She said, "No, yes, you are." I said, "No, I'm not." She said, "Yes, you are." At the end, I end up going to the radio station. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, trust me, you will. She will follow through into yes. convince you. Yeah. She is very, she's very much um, a go-getter. And she's now that I, now when I put two and two together and realize that that's your daughter, it, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. So you should be proud. I know you are a proud mother of Lamar Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And, and now going to be a grandmother. So let's talk about your foundation, mm-hmm. um, the name of the foundation, and if people want to get involved in the foundation, where can they go? What can they do? Okay, the fun, the name of the foundation is Seed Semillas by Gloria Caramanites. And and um, they could contact me, 718-213-8693. Um, the foundation, actually, we're raising, fundraising here, but it's for Panama. And um, we had an, a bank account, but... What I, I, we're going to have, um, I'm, I'm going to launch the foundation in Colón in the Parque Cinco in Noviembre. Um, we're planning for the next summer to bring the, uh, the symphonic to the Parque Cinco in Noviembre, something totally different. And because I, uh, the music is, is, is the life of Colón. Mm-hmm. But when we experiment the music differently, it's going to impact the society because the symphonic, um, it, it gets to your heart. And we're trying to change the mentality of, of the youth that they, they could be. I love the comparsa. I love the Congo. And you cannot tell me, don't jump the comparsa because I love it. But if we start to diversify our music, we could learn that there's so much to learn, so much to understand, and that's going to bring that awareness that we are able and capable of coming out and coming out of Cologne in a good way. Not for me and for two or three, but for the community at large. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you, Alexis S., for the super chat. Now, the Panamanian Parade just passed. Everyone's just rushing. me. They just asking the questions that I'm going to that I wanted to ask. But we'll <laughs> leave it to the viewers to ask the questions that you guys want to ask um, or make comments that you guys want to comment. Donna Kirton says, Saludos, Gloria from Brooklyn, USA. What a fabulous time of of how our Panama was fabulously represented both in Brooklyn and on Fifth Avenue week in their res- perspective parade. You were at the parade, right? Oh, definitely. I don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and how, first of all, the whole idea that, that Panamanians was even able to have to shut down Brooklyn for a day and just to be able to represent a country that a lot of people still don't know where Panama is. It's exactly. crazy. They still don't know. How meaningful was that for you, being that you 
played a major part in Panama's culture and history. And then to see how now the new generation is taking over, even though some of them were not born in Panama, their yeah. parents are Panamanian, they're the ones that's actually going to take the lead in the future. How, how, do, how do you feel as a staple in Panamanian history when you see something like this happening? Well, it's, it's the, em, the emotions are high. Mm -hmm. the, the nostalgia is, is great, and we could reminisce. That is a, you know, like a day of, of high energy in, mm -hmm. in, in, in the parade. I mean, everybody is tuned to the flag to the music, to the food, to the friends, uh, to uh, reminisce, to dance. I, I actually, I, every day, I, I, every year I dance with I, with a comparsa and I enjoy it. And I, I, I ask everybody, I'm not working today. Mm -hmm. Not today, I'm not working. Because I love, it takes me back to Cologne when I do all those things. So I imagine there's many other people that they, you know, all of that things that we do, that they will take you back and it, it brings you joy. And and I, I, I come out every single year. This year I was in the Fifth Avenue Parade as the Grand Marshal of Molas de Panama. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we won the parade because Panama had a beautiful, presentation. Uh, we have five floats in the Fifth Avenue. We have five floats. Um, the, the main float were in, in, in decoration of the Congos de Panama, right? It, was, it has something with the Congos and the Diablitos. So mm -hmm. that was the team this year. And then the first group were um, a musica a, from Chitre. It was La Tuna de Chitre. Then there was a, a vocal group that may play an important role in Fifth Avenue, and that combination made Panama win the parade this year. It was beautiful. I I, I, I wasn't there, but I was watching from mm -hmm. you know from what everything else everybody else was posting mm -hmm. on the internet, and it was absolutely amazing to mm -hmm. see. And it was kind of like touching. Like I was getting goosebumps. <laughs> yes, um, everybody gets that. Yeah, I was getting if, even the uh, I I was marching beside the general consul, and he was very impressed. He, he was because I I don't think he was he marched in a parade of that magnitude in Fifth Avenue before. So he was he was like, wow, this is amazing. It feels great, I say. It feels great when you start seeing your flag all across the Fifth Avenue, you will love it more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Pan, Panam, Panamacan, okay, Panamacan 507 PTY says, isn't it odd that Panama being a black majority Latin country, you're the first black Miss Panama. Colorism is re is real. Yes, it's, it's okay. Um, well, we put it in the context of 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I was Miss Panama 40 years ago, but Miss Universe didn't have our first black Miss Universe until 1979, uh, 1978, actually. Um, she was from, oh, she is from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, so there have been two Miss Universe from Trinidad and Tobago, and the other one was from South Africa. There have been three Miss Universe black. So it's not that... Um, is is just only in Panama. It's a mm -hmm. worldwide perception, mm -hmm. okay. But I am a firm believer that if you don't embrace your blackness, if you don't feel black and you don't feel proud of your blackness, it's not gonna be perceived in that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think most of the black people get intimidated sometimes. You know, like, oh, maybe, you know, they're not going to like me. No, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you should never feel intimidated. You should never feel less. You should never feel nothing. You just have human being and a creation of God, and you deserve all the goodness. And if you have a dream, you follow your dream. Because God is not looking at your color. He's looking at your soul. Mm -hmm. And your soul has no color. 
I think Pan like Panama has a problem in the sense of like you, it's mostly identity issues because mm -hmm. even when I go, they're like, "Ah oh, no, tú no eres blanca, tú eres chomba blanca." No, you're Kulisa, and this person, and I'm just like, people, if you leave Panama and you go to another country, they're not gonna say you trigueña, you Kulisa, you chomba blanca. That that those words don't exist. That those are, them, the, those are the those are the the division that I'm talking about. Right, and mm -hmm. then when they say these things, they get offended. Like they see. Number one, they see black as like if you call them black, they take it offensive. Like mm -hmm. no, like you know. And the second Morena. thing, Morena, they, they're gonna call you Morena. Then if they say if you say that you black, they thinking like black, like the color black, like your skin mm -hmm. is the color, like literally like the color black. And they get very not everybody, but a lot of people, most people, um, they get very offended when mm -hmm. you call them black for whatever reason. And I and I, I just feel like that has a lot to do with. Mm -hmm. People just don't really know how to identify themselves. And then two, they don't really teach black history in Panama either. Mm -hmm. um, but one of my friends, he did send me a curriculum that they're going to be teaching black history in Panama. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to start next year for the next school year. I'm not sure. But that's something that I think is very, very important. I, um, I'm going to tell you how it works. Um, they, in my time, there were no history, black history at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was 2000, yeah, 2000, they passed the law of Black Ethnicity Month in May, and, and which is good. Um, but to review the books, the scholar books, you know, people have to uh, present the information. So when they're making the review of the school books, if the Black people don't present the information, to the proper channels, then the book cannot integrate the new information. We could find information, but not as we would like to. And it's not only we have to see that part, but the process is that the information needs to be presented to the editors so it will be included when they're making all the reviews. So we have to think into consideration that yes, we need to get together and plan what else we're gonna integrate in the books. Right. Mm -hmm. I I, w I think the person that I know is a, a gentleman that I actually interviewed on the channel before. Mm -hmm. His name is um, Aniba, mm -hmm. and he's a professor. He's he has dreadlocks and he's very into mm -hmm. uh, black culture in Panama. And he was the one that actually he's working with um, the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. in exactly. in um in the curriculum, um, mm -hmm. in the curriculum. And they did send me the curriculum yesterday, but right. one of the comments that they were saying was that now that they, they're gonna have to find teachers, that they're gonna have to be vigilant of the teachers to make sure that the teachers are teaching the information the right and proper way. Mm -hmm. So then that's a whole nother challenge in itself. Mm -hmm. um, Pat American 507 PTY says, the US and South Africa was th were thought of as being a very as thought of as being very racist racist but they both had black president panama has never had a black president what does mm -hmm. that say about panama society okay i'm i'm gonna tell you a little bit about south africa uh, south africa have a struggle of a hundred plus years that uh, ended with nelson Mandela becoming the president of, of South Africa and and um, after that he has been five consecutive black presidents in South Africa but has been a work of the in the ANC the the African National Congress which is the biggest party in South Africa so I'm saying that to tell you that we are not preparing ourselves in that degree because we separate our struggle. Mm -hmm. Once we get a position in the government, the we forget about what's the mission. And the mission is one. And the, your mission and division have to concur with the struggle of the black people. It cannot concur solely in the mission of your personal goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
I think that this and in this this in an issue of ego that coming across our struggle. And it's an issue of generation. Who am I teaching to follow through the things that we already conquer as black people in Panama? Um, Alexis says, that's right, Queen. Be proud <laughs> of being black. Um, then someone said, coming, coming. maybe V girl will teach black history in the future. Maybe, you know, I don't, I, well, first of all, when I started this YouTube channel, I didn't, the, the, the path that this has been going on thus far is not a path that I saw myself going. I think this is the work of God and uh, the alignment of where, uh, how I'm connecting with people and getting people on the platform and getting people to recognize Panama and and so I won't ever say no I'm never going to teach black history I don't know um if that's what God wants me to do then then that's what I'll do um Morris Campbell says the colorism is not only real in Panama in every colonized nation in America absolutely um what's this the visit of African royalty to Mi, Mi Pueblito was amazing too. I remember that, as well as Kaida Harding's marriage to the African prince. Okay, well, um, I think that this was an amazing, amazing um, conversation. I think that people should get involved in whatever you're doing. You also have a business that I think that people yes. should know about as well. Mm -hmm. For those of you who want to move to Panama, right? Because P this is actually a good, um, qu this came right on time. As mm -hmm. someone who is planning to move to Panama, God willing, this is very enlightening information. Now, Gloria has a, a shipping company, people. So a lot of you who follow me are people that want to move to Panama and you always are asking questions on where you can go to ship your items, your furniture. Gloria can go ahead and give you that information. Well, moving and um, going back to Panama is easy. Okay, you just have to make a phone call. <laughs> uh -huh. And that phone call is to 718-636-4813. It's Forward Pan America. The number again is 718-636-4813. Uh -huh. 636-4813. And yes. it's called Pan? Forward Pan American. Forward... I'm going to put it in the comment section, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, here it is. You guys can't, yeah, I'm putting it, yep, I'm going to put it in the community tab as well for you guys. So if anyone is interested, um, you guys can contact her directly for your shipping needs. Um, we're almost at an hour, and I know that oh, wow. the queen is very busy, and she has things <laughs> to do. Um, but I do want to say thank you so much for joining me on my channel and speaking to the people. People were so excited when mm -hmm. I told them that I was going to have you on the channel. So thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. No coming. problem. I, you know, let, let, let me not go without saying that um, um, there's one thing that I am very concerned with the, with the black people is that we have to learn to appreciate each other. And don't think that because you made it, um, it's, it's, it's just because your only effort. Um, by the grace of God, we could be able to help, you know, other people. And if you made it, try to help someone else. Especially Panamanian people. I feel yes. like a lot of times when Panamanian people leave Panama, they don't look back. Like, unfortunately, that's the reality. Like, I see, like, they leave. And I even people, like, when they tell me, like, oh, why would you oh go to Panama? Why would you do this? Why would you do that? Why, why, why? And then when I go into explaining all the amazing things that I've experienced in Panama, they um they tell me that I'm crazy. They tell me that I'm crazy for, for moving back to Panama. My mom uses her shipping company, shipping service, and the service is great. Thank you. Oh, thank you. The, thank you, big girl, <laughs> for this information. And amazing. thank you guys for tuning in as always. And who else? Thank you. It was an honor. Hope to see you again on V Girl TV.
Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, Gloria. God bless thank everybody. You so much. Thank you okay, for taking thank this you. time out. Okay. Bye. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys, um, for tuning in to the live. It was amazing having an icon on the channel. Um, you guys, don't forget to sign up um, for the mailing list, people. I got some amazing things that's coming that I'm doing, and I want to keep you guys informed. So please go to vgirltv.com. The site is live. Go to vgirltv.com. Sign up for our mailing list. You don't want to miss the information that's coming. And the next guest, okay, the next guest that I'm having on my channel, I have a few guests that you guys don't want to miss, okay? Amazing Panamanian young, young people that's doing amazing things for the culture. So I can't wait to share it with you when I put out the flyer, which you have to be on the mailing list to get the flyer first, okay? So make sure you do that. How about Gloria Caramante? What about her, baby? Thank you, Rick B. Thank you so much. Thank you for um, the super chat, Alexis, right? Thank you for the super chat. Uh, I appreciate the super chats. You guys are awesome. Also, before we go, don't forget, I'm doing a fundraiser, a toy drive for the children in Colón for Christmas, okay? I'm leaving it up until I make the goal, but if I make the goal sooner, I'm closing it out by um, the 1st of December because I want to make sure that I get all the gifts I'm doing. Every time you guys donate, I'm buying a gift as soon as the funds go into the business account, okay? So that is it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the video, to my live show, and I can't wait to see you guys next week, okay?